Hi there, it's Pete the Hipster King from the Hairy Game Lords, and this evening we have been playing this Marvel Age of Heroes from WizKid Games. What did we think? Stay tuned to find out. So, uh, Age of Heroes is a, a game with a mixture of mechanics in there. You've got basically, at its core, it's a worker placement game. I guess you could argue there is, a, as part of that, you are building a shared tableau of additional worker placement spaces that you can use. And the benefit of it being a shared one is obviously there are more options available for all players. But if you are the person who plays down the card, you get a bonus if somebody uses you, the card on that sort of shared tableau. So it's one of, it's got that in there. As often in worker placement, you are also doing resource management. So you've got a double-sided board. So you've got the basic sort of player board or you've got the advanced. The advanced gives you a special ability um, and also unlocks a, an, an extra set of evolution cards, which are kind of, you can develop your own little engine around your player. So you've got engine building opportunities in here and you've got the three tracks, which are your physical, mental and willpower track that are basically your resources that you're going to use in the game. And what you're trying to do, you play either one or a pair of classic X-Men heroes. So I played as Gambit and Rogue. Um, and you pick those at, from the beginning. And then you are going to be battling out against a random selection of these bad guys. So we were fighting. We started off with two light, sort of like minor baddies. So we were fight, fighting Pyro and uh, Blob, Blob, wasn't it? Um, once you manage to kill one of the miners, they you then bring in some more challenging threats. And once you've killed a challenging threat, you're able to flip over the randomly selected final fate, uh, which is a big baddie um, that's going to require a hell of a lot of. Um, resources to kill so the way each baddie re is represented basically you have this side which has got all the different possible pieces of damage that you can do and then you add quite nicely your baddie card to that and you can see where which specific pieces of these damages you need to be able to do to cause the damage once the damage is filled up on that villain that villain has been killed and you can move on to the next one. So throughout the game, you're going to be doing that as you kill villains and at various other points, you're going to be gaining victory points. And as always in these games, at the end, the player with the most victory points wins. In terms of the game, inside this game, all the mechanics, there is a really good game trying to get out. Our biggest problem, I think, and it will become a theme, I think, through today's review, is the fact that even, I mean, this was a learning game, um, so it will have been longer. But the way the game works, at the beginning, there just aren't enough spaces to get to because you haven't got many of those cards out on the tableau. So you have got very little you can do. And you're so it takes a bit. It wasn't until sort of round four or five that we started really seeing escalation and things starting to speed up. Um, and the last probably three rounds in terms of they sped up and we finished the game off pretty quickly, but it was about two and a half to three hours in a game that really probably should take about an hour and a half, an hour, hour and a half. If that if that game was this long, it would have been a lot more enjoyable. It just felt like there was a lot of drag in those early rounds as you were trying to get the resources to do something to kill a baddie and then get some cards out. And it just took that early game took too long the last part of the game, if you could have started the game with that kind of built up and played that last hour of the game, it would have been brilliant and we would have had a very different feel to this review. I assume that some of that would speed up as uh, you you get more into it and we wondered whether at a lower player count you have more, um, you have individually more actions, so there might be more that you could do. It's different, so it would be interesting to see how this scales down at a lower player count, but at four it did feel quite um quite full by the end of the game quite um but that it i enjoyed a, bit, a lot of the parts of this game um and i enjoyed annoying dave um not gonna lie <laughs> but actually i still didn't win even doing that uh it was a it was a close run thing towards the end but yeah i think not the hit that we'd hoped it would have been it's not a bad game it's just a long game that probably doesn't need to be this long so it kind of Felt a little bit like it started to outstay its welcome. 
Ange the Bearded Lady. This game, I really, really wanted to like it. You've got the theme, Marvel. You've got X-Men, brilliant. You've got these absolutely fun the components in this game are really nice. So uh, you've got the player boards. They're a nice thickness to them. And then you've got these cubes that will fit into there. So that's that's great. I like the cutout in that. So you've, it, it's not dual layered because you've it's it, it's a cutout thing. But neither is it the like the annoyance of terraforming Mars where it's just sat on a board and then you knock it and you don't know where your your tracker is. So you plug in your cubes into there. Nice, I like that a lot. Um, the artwork on 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 there, brilliant stuff. Really like it. The cards has really nice artwork on it. Here are some of the cards. Look at that, fantastic. Just uh, in keeping with the, with the comic books. Just really nice theme and artwork through the cards. The big bad enemies, the, the, again, great artwork going on. These things here, the little standees, oh my word. Love them, the little kind of, what are we calling this? Acrylic standees. Acrylic standees, love that. So you've got, and the attention to detail on there, uh, you could say, you could be like, oh, well, we'll have the front facing on this one, and then we'll also have the front on the back. But no, they've they've got the back. Brilliant. Really, really like these. And actually, these are a nice alternative to minis because, of course, you've got all of the artwork going on there. You've got the, the colours already on there. So really, really like those. So, uh, and then there's some nice chunky wooden uh, students. <laughs> <laughs> flying students <laughs> flying students great so the component wise really nice really nice uh, and then the game board itself is quite a large game board uh, with lots of different locations on but having said all of that the time that it, sp it took to play this game was annoying quite frankly was annoying the lack of locations for you to place out the all important uh, ally cards so there's a whole row uh, of spaces available for you to place down these certain types of cards but there is only one space one space that only one person can use per round at the beginning of the game and and then later on there was two spaces, but it was so annoying that it took so long at the beginning to start to place out that. And actually, it meant that if you went early doors and got some of these students, then actually you would have nowhere to place them because there wasn't enough locations. So that became uh, very slow, very kind of bottlenecked and just dragged out the game, which created annoyance for myself and for the player in all of our games who gets annoyed extremely quickly, uh, that's Dave the Great. Speaking of which, shall we hear from him now? Let's. Hi, Dave the Great. Hey. So it's that like they're not even interrupting <laughs> my introduction. So, the good stuff. Um, artwork, if you like the comics, the artwork is fantastic on the cards on the player boards awesome as Andrew said these vinyl standees are great so obviously um she can walk through walls so on the front you've got a front and on the back her disappearing shoes Whoa. awesome whoever did that clever. such a genius clever love it um the game i love a worker placement i like a tableau Perfect game. Unfortunately, as Angela said, the first half, there's actually 12 spots for allies, and we had one place where you could go and put an ally down. So for the first 45 minutes, it was like, oh, my, um, what can I do that's least bad rather than what can I do that's best? And then the second half of the game, we'd filled a lot of the spaces. And I ended the game with 11 cards, none of which I could play because the spaces had been filled already. So I was just going, I can't really do anything else, so I'll pick up some <laughs> cards and hope that I get some blue stuff. Um, and 
Pete, Pete said that he did something deliberately to annoy me. What Pete did was he could have defeated the end of game bad guy and finished the game. He chose not to do that and spend all of the resources that we needed to kill the bad guy to try and get some more victory points to beat James. Didn't work though, did it? <laughs> it didn't work. Close I was close we ended up at the end. Shush. <laughs> the adults are talking now, Pete. <laughs> yeah, Pete. We ended up playing for another 20 minutes until <laughs> me, who came last, finished the game <laughs> by killing the bad guy just so I could go home. Um, <laughs> I think inside here, there is a really good hour and a, hour and a half game. But I think because we played at four, it was really slow at the start, cramped at the end, but we would, I was certainly, I was just like, there you go, there's my turn. I could probably have done better if I'd been paying more attention, but I was just trying to kill the bad guy, regardless of points. Um, may well play better at two and three. Really, really wouldn't recommend it at five, because you'll be here for weeks. Um, Looks great. I would actually be quite happy to give it a go at two or three just to see how it went. At least I'd give it a go for the first hour and a half. Uh, and if we were nearly finished, it's a great game. Uh, nearly three hours. Not such a great game. Slightly Barney James here, the victor. <laughs> Woohoo! So good to the end. <laughs> Edited. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So this game is long, yeah, we, we know that now, but uh, I think the thing that this game does really well is it is a very, very um, enticing semi-co-op. So you've got that whole thing of like, yeah, we've got to kill the bad guys together and like that weird thing of like, I don't know, X-Men games seem to do this a lot, like we're killing the bad guys, but we're also trying to get the most points doing that, so it's like, we're on the same team, but I'm trying to show that I'm better than you. And um, there's that whole kind of weird dynamic thematically, which I don't get. I just be on the same team to ever it together. I don't know. But uh, the thing that's really exciting and enticing about this game is you are always tempted to the dark side of prolonging the game just so you can try and get some more points. And um, I think that this game does that really well. Um, I think um, that the things that I found finicky about the game were there were a couple of kind of like special rules like actually when I say special rules they were the kind of rules that were on a lot of the cards we weren't entirely sure exactly how to play those out for example you end up moving this guy over here which moves this guy over here does that activate that do they get a special bonus from that and so like maybe we just thought too much into it um, so some of the special rules weren't especially clear. Um, the other thing that really got me was um, I'm a very procedural person when it comes to games. So is Pete as well, actually. Um, but um, because you're playing with your little standees, so everyone's got these standees, and everyone's got access to these uh, these students who are so nondescript that you don't know if somebody's had their go before you at four players and so when especially when the turn order keeps changing it's bouncing across the cable and then uh, you get in trouble because you've put down your guy because you thought somebody's already gone that was just you. Uh, it's because the yellow guys look like they could be anybody's and you don't know if somebody's had their turn and uh, maybe it's just me but I'm, I'm very much a procedural yellow goes and then red goes and then blue goes but this was um because of the jump in and the, the kind of the additional kind of like nameless peons that we've got i found that a little bit frustrating uh, the other thing that i found quite frustrating uh, it's very cool uh, but let's have a look at this guy here so this is omega red uh, there's a few different ways to attack and damage this guy i really like in the advanced version you get bonuses for doing your preferred kind of like um, symbol, which I really enjoyed that. Uh, the thing that I found frustrating about this was across the table, uh, you got all of these symbols down here. These are places you can go to attack them. So for example, this lines up to this. It took me a long time, and I mean far too long to realize that I, I 
couldn't do the thing that I wanted to do. And so if somebody's covered that up, then I can't go there anymore. And I can't do that thing that I've been thinking is my turn for ages. And um, I think it's probably a kind of like a graphic design thing. And like, it's really cool that you got that kind of matching up thing there. But it's also because there's so much information here. It all matches up to these tiny little areas. I just found that a little hard at first. Um, I think that, yeah, I, I don't know. I wasn't enthralled by it, but it really tickled me to be a troll and to, uh, to wind up Dave. So thank you for the opportunity. And it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> um, also, I really, really like how um, you've got like extra decks of cards that go with different kind of like classic X-Men stories. So we did Children of the Atom, which was, was like kill the bad guys. But then there's also Fatal Attractions, which is about Magneto getting his acolytes together. So, and uh, then there's the Fall of the Mutants, which is Apocalypse. And you've got four of the goodies who've been drawn to the bad side as his horsemen. Um, I really like that there's that kind of like thematic in inclusion in the game. And I mean, like you can tell that it is all about putting different combinations of stuff together. It's pretty cool for that. Um, I don't need to play it again, but I also um, think that, yeah, it's got its merits. It is very long, like my review.